Hello? What do you mean? You mean the ball, the ball, the ball hitch pulled out of the truck? Do you, where, where, do you know where the pin is that holds the hitch in the truck? Kelly's head to South Dakota to uh, pick up our uh, new bin sweep, and, and she just had a pretty serious mishap, but. Take, 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 take the other hitch in the back of the truck and try and tap on that lever to, 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 knock, to knock it back to where it is. Okay, go ahead, go ahead and st stick a clip in. You got it in there. It don't matter. It don't matter. It's on there. All right, looks like you got everything lined up. Looks good. Uh, you're ready to uh, back the truck up and hook the trailer back up. FaceTime me again whenever you get it hooked up so I can uh, uh, make sure that the latch is locked in properly. Okay, after an hour, on one of the busiest highways and nobody got over. Okay, so, I am on the way to Sioux Falls, South Dakota to go pick up our new bin sweep. I am going by myself because Matt has to stay in the field and he has to work. I have gotten an hour and 10 minutes away from the house and the trailer came off. So I have spent the last hour and a half fighting to get it back on. The pin that holds the hitch broke out somehow and uh, so I got on the side of the road and then I called Matt and uh, walked me through it, but uh, I'm not physically built for this, but I did it and uh, now I still have four and a half hours to go till I stop at my friend's house. This would be me sitting in the second or technically third part store of um, my journey with this trailer from hell. And um, so the hitch pin, the hitch pin broke off and that's that's been my demise ever since. The wind is up to 16 to 25 miles an hour. Uh, I'm getting pushed around like a pinball. 
and every bump I hit, my nerves just go absolutely out the door. So I've stopped and FaceTime Matt and I got another uh, longer hitch pin because the pin I had was too short and the uh, clip kept backing out. So I've gone, <laughs> literally in four hours, I should be, you know, three hours ahead of myself, I'm not. And I'm just so frustrated because this should not be this hard to drag a trailer up to South Dakota and now I'm gonna have to do it in a winter storm tomorrow with 40 mile per hour wind. So, I mean, by the time this goes to YouTube, I'm either gonna be on the side of a road or uh, committed. So, at least I'm gonna pick up a passenger and uh, I don't know, it might get better or it might get worse, but at least I'll have somebody to join me in my demise and uh next time really need to put a toolbox in here because we didn't although i'm grateful matt put the hydraulic jack and um like extra extra parts but i really needed like a toolbox so i had to go buy uh, a hammer and um some pliers but your girl's frazzled <laughs> and i still have to drive through st louis traffic so um i think I, i'm okay now i'm gonna drive about 30 minutes down the road and see Get out and check and see if I'm okay, and then I'm gonna keep going. So that's it for now. Maybe I'll get there, maybe I won't. I don't know. At this point, I need all the all the praying I can get. All right, guys, we just got done uh, spraying all of our uh, cotton ground. You know, we done a little bit of corn ground that I showed you earlier by behind some double crop beans that we aerial seeded. Well, now we got out here behind some full season beans where we uh, ran the uh, air seeder over it planting our cover crop. And just due to the nature of planting, I was able to include a little bit different uh, seed mix over here to really help the corn crop uh most specifically i was able to add austrian winter pea to the mix because uh it's a legume produces a lot of nitrogen going to be great uh, for corn to be planted behind it but uh aerial seeding i can't use it because it's got such a hard seed that uh, it's just not going to germinate hardly at all sitting on top of the ground with aerial seeding but anyway you know look at this out here i mean my goodness i mean this is picture perfect to plant some corn into i know a lot of people won't agree with me oh you got too much biomass out there man it's gonna tall your nitrogen up and everything and gonna really hurt corn yields yada 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 all that kind of stuff and uh, everybody's got a right to their opinion but i respectfully disagree i've done this time and time again and made some tremendous corn uh, some low tremendous low input corn off of it and i fully expect to do that again this year and the secret behind it is to get your cover crop mix right. Uh, you definitely want a high percentage of legumes in here to decompose uh, quickly and uh, uh, start returning nitrogen back to the soil where it can then be used by the corn crop. And as you can see here, you know, we, man, the vetch looks just absolutely beautiful. And by the time, by the time we plant in another few weeks, uh, the amount of nitrogen that's gonna be produced out here is gonna be staggering. And then as you can see right here, you know, Austrian winter peas, I'm a big fan of it, uh, especially planting corn into. Not so much cotton, but corn, I really like it. And then, I mean, we got some clover thriving down, down here. It's not doing as good as the vetch or the winter peas, but it is there, it is producing nitrogen. And then for our grasses, we got uh, cereal rye, oats, and annual rye grass, like you see right there in the mix and the key to this to make sure you're returning fertility to the soil and you're not tying up a lot of early season nitrogen uh, in your uh, corn crop is to get the carbon to nitrogen ratio of your cover crop mix right to where it does break down fa fairly quickly you know grasses are going to have a lot higher carbon to nitrogen ratio that means it's got a lot tougher bonds to break it's going to decompose slower it's great for weed control and everything but uh to decompose this residue does require nitrogen taking longer to decompose your nitrogen will be tied up longer so i try to tailor my cover crop mix about a 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio in my experience uh, it decomposes fast enough to return fertility to your corn crop especially the nitrogen and by the time these legumes the decompose and returning that nitrogen back to the soil is going to be right about the time that corn is going to need its greatest nitrogen uptake so each species of 
plant that you plant out here will have a different to carbon to nitrogen ratio. You know, oats does not have as high of a carbon to nitrogen ratio as what cereal rye does. Oats breaks down a little bit quicker. Annual ryegrass breaks down a little bit quicker than that. The cereal rye is the one that kind of hangs around the longest, whereas your legumes, you know, they got a lot lower than 25 to one uh, carbon to nitrogen ratio and they will definitely break down the quickest. So, so anyway, when trying to figure your carbon to nitrogen ratio, uh, I know greencoverseed.com uh, has a smart mix calculator that's really good on determining how many pounds of which species to plant in order to try and target that 25 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio if you're just now starting out trying to tailor your mix but what we've got uh, planted out here is uh, 10 pounds of cereal rye, 10 pounds of oats, 4 pounds of annual ryegrass, 8 pounds of vetch, 8 pounds of winter pea, and either 10 or 12 pounds of crimson clover. Is what we got in the mix out here. Like I said, that was drilled. Uh, if you're going to aerial seed, your mix definitely needs to be higher than that as far as pounds per acre. And then of course, the uh, Archer Winter Pea does not do good aerial seeding also. But these strips that we're spraying, I think are gonna be very important because as you can see, we've already got a lot of biomass out here. When we come in with Paraquat, it'll definitely fry the legumes, but some of the grasses, especially the annual ryegrass, it won't kill it. That annual ryegrass will put back out and then it'll be competing with that young corn, which we don't want. So uh, I, at least I know right here in the middles where we will be planting, we're gonna go ahead and kill all of that. So we got a nice clean strip. Won't be any competition with a young corn coming up and should get off to a heck of a start for this growing season. And then going along with what I just said about nitrogen production in this field, uh, you know, used to my highest rate that I would apply in my best parts of the field, because we variable rate apply all of our nitrogen based on our seeding prescription, was around 200 units per acre. Over the last few years, I've uh, lowered that maximum rate down to 190 pounds, which is not much, but what, all we've done is see yields go up as our soil health increases. But at least in some of these fields, at least the ones that I drilled with the air seeder, where we've got a nice consistent standard cover crop all the way across the field with legumes producing nitrogen, I'm going to reduce my maximum nitrogen rate some more this year, just trying to test and see you know where we can actually go with this soil health so i don't know if i'll lower it another 10 pounds or maybe 20 pounds i mean i feel pre pretty confident that all this veg and clover and winter pea has got to be producing me at least 20 units of nitrogen per acre the key is is when exactly is that not all that nitrogen going to be available because that's the key with corn making sure you got the right amount on there at the right time so i'll probably be pretty safe and maybe lower it to around 180 pounds per acre you know, the last few years we've been uh, getting over one bushel of corn per pound of nitrogen applied, which is really good. Everybody kind of strives for one bushel per pound of nitrogen. Most people fall a little short of that, especially when you start really shooting for high yields, which we're not. You know, if we, if we average 200 bushels on a good field, I mean, we'll be real happy with that because our inputs are so low. And, and there's a lot of times that we might get even higher than that as long as all the stars align and stuff. So, so yeah, I think this year, at least in some of my fields, I'm definitely going to be trying at least 10 pounds of nitrogen less, maybe a little more. We'll just have to see when we plant our corn, you know, how far along the cover crops are, you know, how much nitrogen I've estimated, estimated that it's produced. You know, we, we've been doing that in cotton for a long time. Uh, for five, six years now, we've only been putting out about half the nitrogen that the University of Tennessee recommends for cotton in a no-till environment, uh, which is 80 pounds an acre. We've been applying usually 40 pounds an acre unless I don't have a good cover crop stand, then we might bump up to around 50. There's a lot of farmers around here that are actually applying 100 pounds of nitrogen, just trying to get some high yields and I've even heard of some applying 120 pounds of nitrogen so for us to be uh, making you know great cotton at 40 pounds of nitrogen per acre has been pretty astounding but this year because we had we're having such a hard time getting our cotton to shut down at the end of the year to get ready to defoliate I'm probably going to drop my nitrogen even more this year to say say to around 30 pounds an acre you know, we had some test plots last year with Utricia that we actually only applied 20 pounds of nitrogen to the acre. And uh, we, uh, those plots averaged like 1,250 pounds on some thin hill ground. So uh, 
Uh, you know, who knows where we can go with this, but we're, tr we're trying to take it slow, trying to make sure we don't screw up and end up with a disaster. But uh, I think we'll get there eventually, but we're definitely going to be a little bit more aggressive with our nitrogen reduction this year. And I think there's a really good shot that we'll at least continue to maintain yields. And if the weather cooperates, might even increase yields. East Missouri looks like. Although, mm, saw that they tilled it up. Not bad. At least it's nice scenery. Okay. Look at all the pretty flowers out there. Oh, they're purple. Although those aren't flowers; those are weeds. But it's still pretty. Just weeds. Weeds all day long. Hmm. I wonder what place I'm at where they have hay. Yeah, that would be uh, Kayla and Jason's. Except I went to go turn around and then I heard something. And wouldn't you know it, the trailer saga continues. <laughs> the electrical box to the trailer just broke off the side. Just just said, you know what? You, I'm done, Kelly. Um, I had to stop and get more clips this is working we're doing well but now oh my god <laughs> it's just i'm done welcome to trailer adventures with kelly day two trying to get that to stay uh kayla went to go get some duct tape and possibly a ratchet strap because you've seen my progress welcome to uh northeast missouri it's flat, it's pretty. It's very cold, very cold. Well, hi. Hello. Hi, cow kitty, how are you? <laughs> this is one of Kayla's cats. But uh, I'm gonna double check everything, make sure everything's working before we head out. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a bad day, but we're gonna try and do as best as we can. I am slated to pick it up tomorrow, so I have no choice. I'm gonna have to go. So not only did Matt, you know, leave me with half tools, like <laughs> windshield wiper's been and saying going, hi to us. We're getting ready to go through a blizzard. Yeah, we're getting ready to go through a blizzard. So I stopped at this amazing advanced auto parts in somewhere in Missouri. Chill coffee. Chill what? Chill coffee. Chill coffee. <laughs> stop. Oh, but he did give me look. He did give me a step stool to use. He did go by. I will give him that. My husband did buy uh, windshield wipers, but they weren't the right ones. So I brought he attempted. these in. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I need this one. So we're ready to go. Uh, no snow yet, but it's coming. We're about, yeah, we're gonna stop and get expensive diesel and then uh, on our way. Welcome to Chillicothe, Missouri, where you can just roll your lawnmower up and get you some gas. <laughs> Because why not? And um, but he does look, look, he does have his coffee with him. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna start rolling my lawnmower up. That saves so much time. Seriously, although she has told me that what you get a DUI, so now you can't drive, but that doesn't count. That doesn't count in Missouri. Okay. Okay. That was a bad clip. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Just wait for a second, okay? I left 70 degrees for this. Look at the rain. Mm, we're almost close to snow. <sighs> Two more hours. Welcome to, what is this, I-29? And I'm pretty sure that this camera will not show it, but we are riding a freaking horse right now. <laughs> than a horse. Oh god! I can't even like text because my Yeah, it's everywhere. like, and I'm going under the speed limit because if I go the speed limit, let's just go the speed limit. We oh god, oh god, oh god. But <laughs> <laughs> we're only 58 oh. miles away. <laughs> we're only, yes, Lord Jesus, please. <laughs> oh, god. Which confuses me because that says it's a, like 137 miles oh, yeah. away. No, and, but it's the not. sign says sign says a different one I'm like no we're almost there but this is the worst part of Nebraska is I <laughs> you literally just 
riding a horse riding up and down. Horse. Like one that has not been broken. <laughs> I'm not walking, you're not riding. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Woo! We finally got onto a good part. And then, no joke, up there, it'll... It'll change. It'll change. It'll change real quick. Oh, shoot. I just dropped a popcorn. Don't drop the snacks. I know. Drop the I'm snacks. <laughs> Welcome to beautiful South Dakota. Uh, it's 30, 35 degrees. 35. We're freezing our butts off. But we have the beautiful heated seats and stuff. All right, anybody who lives here, I wanna know why your roads are like this, okay? Why does it look like this? Why is there like a break every like 10 feet and then you just ride like this the whole time? It's in, in pulling this, this trailer, this is what we're doing the whole time. Just bouncing. up and down, bouncing. So we had to stop for the 17th time for our bladders because, you know, we've had kids and stuff. So I just wanna know why is it like this? Why? Someone chime in that lives South in South Dakota or even Iowa. We want to know why I-29 is like this. Because it is rough. I can't do 80. I can barely do 65. So chime in. Let us know. Oh, look, snow. There's some residents of snow. There is. There's a little bit. Right, next time, Matt. Parts at the beach. I'm not a beach girl. But warmer. Just somewhere warm, honey, please. The Love desert. a god. I would go to the desert. Oh, we would go to the desert, 100%. Desert, next time. Desert. So we made it to T, South Dakota, which is like six miles north of where I have to go pick up the bin sweep. So it's cold. It's 34. But there's no snow. So yet, it's a good thing. We made our own parking spot because this guy over here just detached his stuff and then didn't even leave no room for anybody else to park. So that's nice of him. You gotta love people, so. We are starving. starving and gonna go grab something to eat, have a chill night, and then tomorrow morning. Start all over again. Start all over again and <laughs> pray the weather's good. Getting steamy in here. Six in the morning. And uh, I got ice on my windshield. Uh, the entire truck is ice, and so is the trailer. But we're gonna roll out of here. Try to get ahead of this stuff. It's gonna get bad. But first, coffee. Coffee. This is beautiful. Look at this. Oh yeah, it's fabulous. <laughs> well, well, well. We're here again. Nine, 11 months later. And I see my bin sweep. Um, these roads are BS. Literally, I don't know why South Dakota grades them, but it was like this the whole way. So my brand new truck is gonna have to get a new suspension and I'm gonna have to pay for a chiropractic Appointment <laughs> for this child because oh my god, you guys have no idea oh how bad it was. Oh my god, it was awful. And then GPS took us down one road because that another road closed, and I had to turn around in someone's driveway. It was that bad. So, but we're here. We're gonna load up. And we're gonna get ahead of the storm. <laughs> you, have, Robert, you owe me. That's first name, Robert. You owe mm. me. We we require at least um, a weekend at a very warm spa with massages and um, if not, um, we could just go to a beach house somewhere because my two fingers right here, like the, everything is frozen, uh, but it's on. We're here. Women power and our straps were frozen because I was a dummy and didn't put them in the truck last <laughs> night, but we, we did it. it and now we're gonna get out of this hell hole. That is South Dakota. No offense to South Dakotans, but your weather we, we is- picked a, the worst possible day because last week they said it was really nice. Yeah, so Matt could sent me last week. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say it, South Dakota, your weather is <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna get on this road now, goodbye. Trailer adventure update. We have now gone from sweatshirts to t-shirts. Just went over here and made sure we were double strapped down again. Everything is good, righty tighty next to some beautiful smelling cattle trailers yes but it is a balmy 60 degrees and it continues 
Where are we anyways? Uh, south of Omaha? Yeah. South of Omaha. That's all I know. South of Omaha. Yeah, south of Omaha. We and it's beautiful. Somewhere near, we're on 275, somewhere near like Linwood, Pacific Junction. Somewhere in Iowa, that's all we know. But it's beautiful now, so. We're on 275. Yay. So, <clears throat> we are in Cameron, Missouri. Two hours and 30 minutes away from finally getting her home. Uh, apparently, this um, likes to suck the death out of here. I have filled up every 200 miles since the wind has been blowing at a steady 25, 30 mile per hour. Um, Gusting up. <laughs> yeah, so not getting great gas mileage, but we're still wearing shorts and a t-shirt, and she is still attached. So, we're trailer adventures. Weather. So, uh, great weather right now, but I know I'm heading into worse ones, so I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. But yeah, it's going great. I'll catch you up on trailer adventures later on. So I just dropped off Kayla, and I'm dealing with a um, trailer brake disconnected warning that's been going off every 30 seconds for the last, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. Um, really started on the bumpy roads of West Missouri. I'm thinking it happened during um, when the trailer came off a couple days ago. Might have some damage to it. I still have lights, that's good. But um, yeah, I still got five hours and five minutes and I really have not hit the rain yet. The really bad stuff and the wind but I have to listen to that dinging for the next however foreseeable future, <laughs> unless I get out and literally disconnect it every time. So I'm just gonna keep pushing forward. I mean, I'm on hour thir 13, 13 hours. Doing good, I've been up for 13 hours. <laughs> I'm good, but that's annoying. So it's 8.30, I am three hours away. Um, I am almost out of fuel, so I'm gonna stop here and get some and Matt has left home and is going to meet me because I am done. I have been driving in this rain and this wind for 14 and a half hours and um, yeah, so we're gonna swap trucks. <laughs> I'm very grateful for him for doing that. Um, it's a team effort here. Well, 17 hours later, finally back here, and it is a mess. Trailer Adventures over.